Good morning, good morning. We're waiting for Facebook to work. There it goes. All right. Hello, hello. It's bright and early. Monday morning. I need to get a haircut before the World Series. It's always tough timing your haircuts because um, I know I need to get my haircut every month or so. It's been about five weeks. It's a little bit long. Problem though is I'm going to the World Series for like two weeks and I don't want it to be very long there. So in theory, I should wait like one more week. One more week of no haircut. And um, maybe we'll do that, maybe we won't. You know, some people don't care about when they get their hair cut. Some people never get their hair cut. Um, some people cut their hair all the time by shaving it every morning. Um, it's always an interesting thing. People's um, d desire for what they do with their hair. It's interesting. Everyone's different. It's important to realize everyone is different. They all do their own things, and none of them are necessarily right or wrong. Maybe they're bad, but um, everyone does their own thing. Let's see. PP for Life says, you know the struggle about the haircut. Yes, indeed. Good afternoon from Ireland. Hello, Ireland. Will you be putting hands on Share My Pair? Absolutely not. Um, I'm no longer working with Share My Pair for a few reasons. But um, I have been working with Easy Hand Replayer. And maybe I will be using them there. Maybe not. I'm not sure. But um, no, I'm not going to be posting hands live during the World Series of Poker. Most likely. Most likely. I want to see something real quick. Give me just one second. I want to make sure something's still available. Okay, good, it is. All right, good, 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 good. Um, all of you asked me to reopen the uh, Poker Coaching Bundle, the World Series of Poker Bundle. We have tons and tons of content. I've been coaching one of my students who won $1.3 million recently. Maybe he doesn't need any coaching. <laughs> Maybe he should be coaching me. Um, and we're getting ready for the World Series, and that time has come. A lot of you have asked me to reopen that. We did a short um, promotion of it, but we reopened it. You can get that at pokercoaching.com slash WSOP bundle. Lots of great um, mindset advice there that'll help you get in the zone in that manner. There's lots of strategic advice. There's lots of information pertaining to the venue, and I think if you're going to the World Series, that is a very, very good thing for you to do. Eric says you're playing the Employees Only event on the 29th. You're looking forward to the breakfast on the 28th. Great. I'm looking forward to seeing you there. Um, you're almost done with Mastering Small Six and Element Hold'em. Perfect, perfect. Good, good, good. You went from long to short hair a couple of days ago. Yep. The cash course. Can I tell you anything about it? It is long. It's in-depth. Longer than I thought it would be. But, um, you know, that's okay. We're trying to figure out exactly how to get all of that, get it in your hands. We're thinking about adding it to poker coaching in one way or another. Maybe we will, maybe we won't. We have to figure that out. But um, it's going to be long. Basically, it's going to tell you how to, everything you need to know about cash games. When to bet and when to check. I actually made a PowerPoint for some private students recently. Essentially discussing when to bet and when to check. And you think it'd be easy, but it's really not. And that's really all you have to do to get good at no limit holding. Figure out when to bet, when to check, and how much. And obviously when to fold too, but it's, um, it's a big, broad topic, but I go through many, many, many concepts pertaining to it. And we will, we'll get that to you. Be patient. Be patient. I haven't even made it yet. I'm still working on the PowerPoint. Louis Philippe says they're going to the party poker millions at playground all week. Awesome. Good job. Good luck. You'll be dealing at the world series. Be sure to say hi if you see me. All right. Today we're going to talk about focus. The World Series is coming up. For those who are going, I highly suggest you spend some time focusing on it before you get there. And when you are there, make sure it is your key focus, right? So many people are distracted. And the first thing to help you focus on anything, anything at all, is to make it the most important thing in the world to you. If it's very important, if it's vitally important in your mind, you will do everything in your power to give yourself the best chance to succeed at your task, right? Like, um, I'll say today, I want to make a PowerPoint. I want to finish my PowerPoint on how to play cash games. It's going to take a while. It's going to be a little bit of, a little bit of difficult work. It's going to be tedious, but that's okay. I don't mind, right? And that's the most important thing for me today. Or is it? Or is it? Well, let me show you something else. I have this baby monitor sitting here on my desk. This thing stopped working last night. 
We need to be able to keep an eye on our baby. So I have to go return this. It's one thing that's gonna take away from doing that work. I have to sign my kids up again for um, music class. This probably says something I have to do. We have all these things I have to do before I can really sit down and work on the class, right? And something else that will help you focus is to get rid of the clutter. Now, to be fair, I could get rid of all of these things, right? But I know that I personally do way better work when I have nothing else distracting me. So you need to figure out how to make the task at hand very, very important in your mind. And then also you need to get rid of clutter that will make it difficult for you to see that thing. And you know, very often my Mondays end up being picking up all the pieces from the weekend. Um, I don't do a whole lot of work on the weekends because I try to spend time with my family on the weekends. And inevitably, like you see, I, my desk is just covered in stuff to do. That's only two of the things. We have another document here I have to deal with. I have to go get money ready for the World Series of Poker. All these things take like 30 minutes, right? And if you have 12 things that take 30 minutes each, well, there goes your day. Um, so you have some alternatives, right? You could actually assign times for these things, right? Let's say this monitor I need to go return. While I'm going to do that, I can do that as soon as I'm done here. I can call the music class and get that scheduled on the walk, right? Right after that, I can go to the bank and get the wire sent, right? And that way we're knocking out these things all within a one hour period, right? And I think that, that is all a very good thing to do. I'll come home, I'll have, we'll have probably a few more fires in the email and um, We'll deal with those and then we'll have a solid four or five, six hours to deal with the topic. I also want to get in the gym. That's important, right? We've been getting in the gym. We've been making a point to get in good shape for the World Series. And anyway, what I'm trying to say is that you need to get rid of the clutter. And you have the easy ways to do this are to either forget about the clutter, tell my wife, no, I'm not returning that monitor. I don't care if we see our baby. Um, that's probably not wise for me. I could say to somebody else, you call the music class. But I'm not going to do that because I realize that is my responsibility as a father. It's no problem, right? I know what I signed up for. But other things, like um, say I need to write an article for a card player sometime between now and the end of the week. Well, I have until the end of the week. I know it doesn't take me too incredibly long. And I don't have to do it today. So I can put it off, right? I can say, all right, Friday at uh, 10 a.m., as soon as I'm done with my a little coffee, I will write my article, right? So you can schedule things. I think it's very important to... Make a schedule, especially when your thing, when your when your um life is generally hectic, right? If you have nothing going on, then it's easy. You have the opposite problem where you have so much free time to the point that you may end up procrastinating. I don't have that issue. Thank goodness. I'm glad I have stuff going on. And I find scheduling stuff works very, very well. What I actually do is I have a calendar in my phone, and what I do is I will have things scheduled every day right? Like um, today, either Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, I know I need to go to the bank and get the money sent for the World Series of Poker. Just need to do it, right? And I will do it. And um, I already told you when I'm going to do it. <laughs> and I know I need to write some articles. I, need to know, I know I need to make some weekly Poker Hand episodes. I have these things I need to do, and I make a point to do them, usually first thing in the day. And then once I'm done with that, then I get to the sit down and grind tasks, like recording the cash game class or making... Like anything I need, I know I need to do, especially anything that requires a long block of time. Some things require a long block of time. Some things require 20 minutes, right? Like, for example, calling the music class takes literally five minutes, five or 10 minutes. It's not a problem. And it's just a matter of doing it. And it is something that needs to get done. So, um, thinking of getting rid of clutter in your life, you know, your, your, I guess, metaphysical clutter. I don't know if that's the right word. You should also consider getting rid of the actual clutter. On your desk, maybe in your backpack, maybe in your car, maybe on the desktop of your computer. My desktop and my computer is a mess, but it's um it's an organized mess. But there actually is a little a little little quadrant that I know is like okay, this is the to deal with stuff, and it's kind of a mess. Um, so you need to clear out those things too. If you have clean a clean work area, that's going to be very very helpful. I have two little piles of clutter. One is a book I I like to read every day. It's called um. Here, I'll show it to you. I can dig it out from underneath everything. It's called The Daily Stoic. 
I like The Daily Stoic. It's a good, good, solid book. Let's see what we're going to talk about today. I'm not reading it the exact days. I'm off some days. Take charge and end your troubles. You've endured countless troubles, all from not letting your ruling reason do the work it was made for. Enough already. This is by Marcus Aurelius. So anyway, we're going to read about that today. One more thing to do, right? But once I do it, I get done, put it back on the shelf. We're good to go. We'll do it again the next day. And um, these things are clutter. My wife apparently put some Altoids. Maybe she thinks I have bad breath. <laughs> she put some Altoids on my desk. I don't know why, but I have to do something with this now, right? So once, before we get to work, we will have everything cleared, right? We'll have everything cleared here. And then we will be able to very, very cleanly focus, okay? Um, so make it the most important thing for you. How can you make something the most important thing for you? I don't know if I necessarily mentioned that. I definitely suggest you try to attach meaning to what you do. Don't just mindlessly do things, right? Try to attach meaning to it. Why are you going to the World Series? Why are you studying for the World Series? Why are you, why is Jonathan Little making a cash game course, right? I'm making a cash game course because I get lots of requests for it from all of you. I have not made a very large in-depth cash game course. I actually did a while back, but you know, that was four or five years ago. I need to make a new one. And I'm happy to do it for all of you. Why do I do it? Because I love all of you and I want to help you improve your poker skills, right? And that is valuable to me. I would much rather do that than do something only for myself. And I have no problem with that, right? Why do you go to the World Series? Well, because you like to compete. Maybe you like to provide for your family, right? Try to attach things that matter to you to the things you do. Like, for example, I'm making the class because I want to help all of you, right? I appreciate all of you and I want to better all of you to the best I can, to the best of my ability. Um, why do you want to make money for your family? Well, that's an easy one because you love your family, et cetera, et cetera, right? Um, when you're at the World Series, maybe, you know, you're, you're wondering how to focus. Well, don't go out and party all night. Sure, going out and partying may be nice and fun for you, but would you rather sacrifice perhaps your family's future and money in exchange for having fun one night? Right? It's not, not necessarily smart. Okay. What's a good starting bankroll? Go to jonathanlittlepoker.com slash bankroll. We'll answer some questions real quick. Am I playing um, Scoop right now? No, I live in the United States of America, in New York City, and I do not think it is profitable. It's not worth my time to travel to play Scoop. If you travel to play Scoop, I don't know how much money you're gonna make each day, maybe two or three or $400. Is it worth it for me to go make $1,000 a day? At this point in life, it is not. I would rather sit here and make a cash game course for all of you and help you all out. All right, um, next. We already mentioned clearing your space, but I think you also need to get rid of distractions. One um, horrible distraction I had during the World Series of Poker one year is I would bet on sports every single day. Um, no real rhyme or reason. I thought I was making good bets. Maybe I was, maybe I wasn't. I didn't win or lose a ton of money in the sports betting, but I had a bad year of poker. And the reason is because I was distracted, right? I was focusing some of my attention, maybe not even all, but some, on random scores of sporting events. If I know I'm not gonna be a big winner or loser in something like sports betting, for example, what, what is the purpose of doing it, right? There's no purpose in um, distracting yourself. Same thing with um, going to play blackjack or craps or roulette or slot machines during the tournament break. Why, right? You need to use that time to rest your mind. What is going on with my hair here? Maybe I do just need to go get a haircut today. Looks so weird. <laughs> um, so yes, you need to not distract yourself, right? And very easy ways to do that while you're playing poker is to have something else going on at the same time as the poker. And uh, I know a constant leak for a lot of players in the poker world is either betting on sports or just watching sports. I purposely do not like, well, I, I, don't, I don't follow any sports. I, I used to. But I realized that that was a leak. That was a big hole in my game because it was distracting. And I just stopped following them altogether. You may say, how can I stop following sports? I love the, the Giants. You don't know which Giants team I'm talking about. Let's say you love the Giants and um, you follow every Giants game. And like, how could you stop doing this? Well, ask yourself, what is the purpose of it in your life? 
Now, there's nothing wrong with having a hobby, a hobby, right? There's nothing wrong with enjoying things and, and doing things like that, but understand the price you pay for that, right? Anytime you do something that requires your attention, inevitably that takes away attention from other things. And you have to ask, do I have time for that in my life? For example, I love playing Magic the Gathering, right? But I haven't played, I think I played like 10 games of Magic the Gathering in the last year, in the last five months. 10 games is not a lot. <laughs> Used to play 10 games in three hours. And that's because it is a distraction from what is actually important in my life at this point in time. Maybe I'll find time in the future to pick it up. Maybe I find ways to play with my kids in the future. Whatever. But it's not actually a vital part of my life. So we put it aside. Doesn't mean you don't love it. Doesn't mean it's um, you know, not something that you still enjoy. And it's not certainly not something that you can you're, you're getting rid of forever. But for now, it's not part of my life. And that is okay. Um, let's see. Tools of the Titans poker version. Um, yeah, I, I made a book called Excelling at No Limit Hold'em. That was my version of that. Silver says, a game of fantasy football this year was too much of a time sink. Yeah, too much of a time sink. That's exactly it. Um, you end up getting distracted by old poker hands you play. What I do about that is I write down my hands, and then I forget about them until the nighttime, and then I deal with them at nighttime. Is there a book that I read, read to help organize my day? There's nothing I did, personally. I just make... Um, to-do list and make sure I do everything on the to-do list and I also prioritize the to-do list. There's a program I use called monday.com that's basically a to-do list organizational program. Um, I don't know if it's actually that useful for me. It's certainly useful for people who are very disorganized. I'm pretty naturally organized. I know what I need to do. And if I put something on my calendar and I say I need to do it, I do it. It just always gets done. So that's, that's discipline that is required. Um... When playing on an unregulated site, can you get enough out of remaining at the small stakes plus steady, or is there more to be gained by moving up in stakes and having more money to risk at risk on the site? Ryan, it depends on what you're trying to accomplish, right? Um, never placed wager on sports. I would highly recommend everyone out there never place a wager on anything where um, you almost certainly have a, a, a not an edge. That said, some people make great money from sports. Some people make great money from blackjack and slot machines and all of this. It's always a tough thing because when you're a gambler, an actual gambler, like myself, right? I have done plenty of study on all aspects of gambling games, financial markets, et cetera, et cetera, because that's my job, right? Figure out how to invest your money and make more of it. And um, you definitively can win at sports betting, at blackjack, at even um, roulette if you are smart with the comp structures, right? But all of this is a distraction for me because poker is the thing I do the best by a mile. And... The return on investment of the other things is often not particularly great. For me. Maybe it is for other people. There's my phone productivity apps too you can look into. Yeah, sure. Um, Jason says, you missed the big 50 due to booking a, a booze cruise. <laughs> yeah, right? It's a distraction, right? Um, let's see. Finn had a great Saturday playing poker. Good job, good work. All right, so what are some other things that distract people? Um, drugs. Drugs distract people. This can be very, very soft drugs like uh, cigarettes, right? So many people at the poker world, in the poker world, they play poker for two hours and they run as fast as they can outside to smoke a cigarette. Or, even worse, they play for an hour, then they run outside to smoke a cigarette in the middle of play, and they come back, and then they do it again every hour. This is not a good practice. Um, there are quite a few very, very high-stakes poker players who have done great now over the last few years because they stopped taking those quote unquote required breaks and they stayed at the table and stopped just giving away free hands right it's very very tough to win if you just sit out for 15 percent of the hands you're, you're probably not going to win all that much um this happens to a lot of online players actually who can smoke all they want at home but then when they go to play live they wonder why they have bad results live it's because they get up and they run to smoke every 20 minutes right so same thing happens with alcohol, same things happens with regular drugs. That was Mr. James. Um, but anyway, um, cigarettes are one that you, very, you, you will see at the World Series of Poker. Right outside the front door of the World Series, everyone's smoking. And you don't want to be someone who has to spend your time out there dealing with a habit. And also, you don't want to be thinking about it, right? I, I have never smoked, right? So I don't actually know the thought process. But... From talking to people who do smoke, they say that they, they need it, right? They're thinking about it. And 
I certainly don't want to be thinking about anything, and that just sounds like another very clear distraction to me, right? Do poker players use Adderall? Poker players use all sorts of drugs. I personally don't use any drugs. I do drink alcohol every once in a while, but it's another good example of a distraction, right? So many players at the end of the day, or before the end of the day, every single day at the end of the day, they order themselves a drink of alcohol. You see it, last 20 minutes of the day, people order a drink. I do it sometimes. And it's not particularly ideal. It's not a good thing, right? It's not good to be dependent on things. You know, coffee, coffee's another one, but coffee's, coffee's probably fine. As I drink it. This is actually mushroom tea I'm drinking. But thanks to the McLaughlin uh, Coffee Roasters, they sent me some coffee. Check them out. Use code POKER to get, I think, 20, 25% off. The McLaughlin Co Coffee Roasting Company. They have good coffee. Anyway, you want to get off whatever drugs you're on. Um, I've, I've never done hard drugs either. The only, only drugs I've done, I've, I have smoked, I think, three cigarettes in my life. I have had plenty of alcohol. <laughs> and I have um, had a little bit of marijuana, but not much at all. Um, I've also tried Adderall, Adderall, tried Ritalin. I did not like either of those at all. And um, that's it. That's all I've done. So I'm not, I'm not the best like case study for either any of these things. I always try to tell you all when I have done things that I think are either good or bad in my life, like betting on sports, right? For a whole summer, lost my ass playing poker. Who'd have thought, right? Um, I have seen many other people, though, have this issue with, let's say, going to smoke, with going out and partying and drinking all night, with... Um, betting on sports, with smoking way too much marijuana, like all, all these things, right? You really just don't need that in your life. What mushroom tea am I drinking? It's by Four Sigmatic. It's made out of lion's mane mushroom. I don't know what even what it looks like, but um, I, I enjoy it. It's kind of like coffee, but it doesn't make you all jittery. Um, let's see. Great webinar on Friday. Good, I've enjoyed it. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Do you think differently if your opponent raises a three big blinds as opposed to a min raise? Absolutely. Their range should be typically stronger. Your um, odds are worse, and that changes everything significantly. Um, other things that can be distractions are responsibilities, right? Um, let's say you know you're going to have a cash game session. You have to go pick up your kid from some class at 7 p.m. That means that you can only play poker from, let's say, 4 p.m. until 7 p.m. Then you have to go do something. That will often lead people to making mistakes. So you need to understand how to not necessarily get rid of that distraction, but how to not make that a distraction that drives you to play differently. Because so many people in cash games think, I need to win this session, which you don't. Get over that. But um, for example, if you know you need to have to leave at seven, realize sometimes you're going to be up, sometimes you're going to be down. You should not be chasing wins, chasing locking up, chasing, chasing losses or trying to lock up wins and realize that that should not be adjusting or affecting your play. You're addicted to prime mind. <laughs> Good, that's not, not necessarily a bad thing to be addicted to. You, you love the webinar I did with Fedor. Yeah, Fedor Holtz works with prime mind in conjunction with me promoting that. Um, I did a, a webinar with Fedor. You can find that on YouTube at jonathanlowpoker.com slash YouTube. So check it out. So many good regs smoke weeds on breaks and they crush the game. So many good regs have gone broke because of their weed addiction that you do not see. I, um, whenever I first started playing poker 15 years ago, I had a lot of friends, a lot of friends in the poker world, essentially all of them that smoked a lot of weed and did not quit, a few of them quit, but um, I, I did not quit smoking weed, right? Almost all of them were broke or no longer in poker, almost all. And I say almost all of them, it's a sample of maybe 10 people. It's not a huge sample, right? But literally nine out of 10 of them are broke, okay? That doesn't mean that you can't do it and be successful. Just like, for example, if you go out and party all day every day, you can still be successful, but you're trying to be the exception to the rule. A lot of people like to think that they're the exception to the rule. And to be fair, maybe there are there's exceptions to every rule, but I would highly recommend that you don't do things that have been detrimental to others. And um, this is just my observation, right? Maybe I was just friends with the bad poker players who also smoked weed. I don't know. <laughs> Um, so maybe that was just variance. Maybe the, the eight, nine out of 10 of them just happened to be the bottom nine out of the 20 poker friends I'm looking, I'm considering. But if you take anyone who's, who's hardcore on any substance, they typically don't do so well. I mean, just like, like drinking alcohol, right? There are some people who pound drinks when they play poker a lot, right? Very frequently. And a few of them do okay. Does that mean you should start pounding the alcohol? No, because most of those people go broke. So Please do not look at the exceptions to the rule and think that that means the rule rule does not exist, right? 
Let's see. You've been feeling bad about winning. You don't like hurting other people's feelings and taking their money. Well, get over that. Understand they're trying to take your money, and that's what they signed up for. If you want to give away money, go give it all to charity or something. All right, let's see, let's see. Weed robs life from you. Well, most drugs essentially trade happiness in the future for happiness now. And often it's not necessarily a fair trade. Um, usually you're trading it for a little bit of happiness now in exchange for a lot of unhappiness later, which, you know, Certainly a fine deal for some people and not a fine deal for others. Um, you don't know anyone that drinks, smokes, whatever to excess and has an all-around happy life, regardless of if they somehow stay successful at poker. I mean, look, I'm not trying to say these things are necessarily good or bad for your life because I don't know, right? I I've already told you all I have literally no experience or almost no experience. And um, I, have, I have learned from other people's experiences though. I think it's very important to learn from other people's experiences. I've made plenty of mistakes in my day, but the uh, getting on drugs is not one of them. And I, I don't necessarily think all drugs are necessarily bad, right? I think you should be allowed to do whatever you want to do within reason as long as you're not hurting anyone. The problem is what is hurting anyone, right? Um, I, I, would, I would have liked to enjoy, I, I would have liked to try the psychedelic drugs as a young person. It seems like those are very helpful for a lot of, for a lot of people. But now, at this point in my life, I'm not going to do it because if anything went wrong, it would be detrimental. People say clearly, oh, it's not, probably nothing's bad going to happen. I get it. It's not worth it, right? I'm a perfectly happy human. I enjoy my life. And uh, everything's great. And I have no desire to attempt to change that by getting on a substance. Um, Chris says, you mean you don't smoke cannabis right outside the Rio? Uh, don't do that, by the way. <laughs> if you're going to Montreal, Canada, don't smoke cannabis in, Mon in a, on the, a playground poker club. That is not allowed there. It's not allowed at the Rio as far as I know. Maybe it is. I don't know, actually. Anyway, don't do that kind of thing. How many blinds is a good win rate in live poker? 10 big blinds per hour is usually a pretty solid one. Um, answer your question, please. Gang, look, you have to understand. I'm talking here about what I want to talk about. I don't see your question, so type it in again. All right, what else are we talking about? Get off the drugs. Oh, responsibilities. Going back to responsibilities. Yeah, you need to figure out a way to make sure the responsibilities don't impact your play. Um, so many people have their significant other who gives them pressure. They give them crap if they lose. Um, some poker players have gone as far as to say to their significant other, they always won and give them money. I think that's not a good thing to do. Um, I don't think you need to be lying to your, to your significant other. I don't think you need to do anything like that. But anyway, what I'm saying is that is a pressure. That's a responsibility outside that gives you a problem. If it's giving you a problem, figure out why. Oh, I hate to go keep going back to drugs. Everyone wants to talk about drugs. Um, if you go to the parking lot, most casinos don't care what you're smoking there. I'm telling you, Natty, I have known people who have been banned from the Rio for smoking weed in their car, okay? All I can do is tell you from other people's experiences. I have not been banned. But I, have, I know of other people who have been banned from the Rio for a year. They've lost their time to buy in for that day for smoking marijuana in their car. Take it for what it's worth. It was about three or four years ago, so I don't know what the deal is now. But anyway, don't break the rules. It's very well known. If you don't cause problems, if you don't break the rules, if you do not push the boundaries of the rules that are clearly set by the venues, you will have no problems. So many people want to... Well, do things they're not supposed to for some reason, right? And um, I know it's common sense, but a lot of people want to push the boundaries. If you work with a company and they tell you not to do something, don't do it. For example, say you have a sales job and they say you are not allowed to give a kickback to the people who buy from you because that induces them to spend their company's money inappropriately, right? They say you're not allowed to do this. And you say, ah, maybe I'll just take them out to a fancy dinner once a quarter. Is that a kickback? You're not giving them money necessarily, but you're taking them out to a fancy dinner. So don't do that, right? If they say you are not allowed to belittle other companies in the industry, don't do that, right? Understand that when you're working for someone or working with someone or trying to cooperate with someone, as poker players do with the casino, you want to cooperate with the casino, don't break their rules, right? Don't break the rules and you will have no problems. Don't even try to push the rules and you will certainly have no problems. Be a good stand-up individual, and turns out life isn't all that difficult if you obey the rules. 
Uncle Eddie, the mayor of Brooklyn, good morning. Hope you're having a great day. Let's see. Let's see, let's see. Same at Playground Poker Club, they will ban you. I know someone was banned last time. Uh, I was there for smoking weed. There, you can smoke all the cigarettes you want, but no weed. All right, let's see what question gang really wanted answered. Let's see if it's a really good one. Is there a certain stack size you should have going into day two, or should you go by the average stack? Neither, gang. Come on, get real, right? Say day two. First off, what does day two mean? Imagine they let 5% of the field do day three on tournament A and 40% of the tournament to day two on tournament B. Should you have the same stack size on both? No. Also, can you actually affect your stack size? No. All you can do is play good poker. You're going to find, by the way, average is a horrible metric because most people are below average. Take a second, think it over, and you'll see that that is true. The vast majority of the time, almost always in a tournament with like 100 people left, the, average, the, av the actual stack is going to be below average. So get over the idea of thinking that you need to be at average or anything like that because that is asinine. All you can do is play to the best of your ability. Sometimes you get chips, sometimes you don't, sometimes you're the big stack, sometimes you're not. But you certainly shouldn't be sitting there thinking, oh, I need to get three more big blinds to be at average, so I'm going to raise with this 9-4 offsuit. No, don't do that. Don't do that. Poker players are rebels. Certainly some people are. And um, ask yourself what you're rebelling against and what's the purpose, right? If there is no purpose, like what are you doing? <laughs> Let's see, if an opponent is agitated, irritate them. Yeah, I don't know anything about this. But yes, um, how you get people to go on tilt, that's for sure. You call it the rebel gene. Some people just can't help themselves. Some people cannot help themselves. And that's a, that's a life leak, right? Some people out there, they want to cause problems. They want to stir the pot. They want to be an instigator. And quite often, these people don't actually do all that well in life because they instigate the wrong things. And um, inevitably, they get crushed. And so understand that if you are an instigator, if you're out there stirring the pot and causing problems, whether with others, whether with the people you work with, whether with anything... Realize your life to get destroyed <laughs> at any point in time. It's very important to cooperate and be a good actor and not cause problems. If you are a bad actor and you cause problems on a regular basis, people will not want to work with you. People will not like you. And the doors in life will close. I've had plenty of doors closed on me because in the past I've done bad things. And I've made a point to actively be good and better the world since then to have doors open. And it turns out many, many doors have opened because I've been a as good as I possibly can in the poker community. And I think that's what we should all strive towards. Tournament hand, A7 suited on the button. Two, you raise 2.5 big blinds, small blind calls. Jack, five, four, one spade. You bet 3.2 big blinds. Um, I'd be definitely bet smaller here. Your opponent calls, turns it to a spade. You bet again. I would definitely not bet again. Here you have ace high, which is often good. And you have a flush draw, which is definitely good. The best flush draws to check behind are going to be the ones with showdown value. And you very clearly have showdown value. Rivers of seven, opponent leads into you, and you call. Yeah, well, is he bluffing or not? You're here for James. Where is he? I don't know where James is. He's out there somewhere. He walked by a second ago. Should you always stay above so many big blinds? No, you cannot control how many big blinds you have. All you can do is play the best poker you possibly can. Sometimes you're going to win. Sometimes you're going to lose. How do you feel about getting massages at the table? I think it's certainly an acceptable thing to do. Um, just make sure it's not a distraction, right? I know some people, they sit there. Like, I know when my neck's hurting, I have terrible neck pain for all those who do not know. When my neck's hurting like crazy, I, I'm sitting there thinking, man, where's someone to give, get a massage from, right? And that's not good. It's like, like a drug to some extent. It's not actually a drug, but it's like a drug where it's just taking attention away from poker. And that's not good. You want to be there and you want to be focused. So if this is something that continuously draws your focus away, like smoking cigarettes or betting on a sporting event, maybe you should get that out of your life. Started playing in 2014 live. You're having trouble transitioning to online. Online poker is way tougher than live. You get bored playing online. Well, it's a different game. Maybe you need to play more tables. You've tried a lot of things like watching podcasts, TV. Definitely don't do that. All those things are just purely distractions. Um, you don't want to, I mean, you have to understand it's just a different game, right? So maybe you need to be playing more tables. Maybe play four tables. Maybe play eight tables. I don't know. Find a number that works for you to where you're not distracted. What about daydreamers? How do daydreamers focus? Again, this goes back to making it the most important thing in the world for you. If you'd rather not focus on the poker, well, maybe poker is not what you need to be doing and you need to accept you're going to have poor results because of it. Um, let 
Let's see. DP says you've been blessed significantly since you started doing good things in life and making good decisions. Good. And the book, The Daily Stoic, has helped you. I'm glad to hear that. But yeah, I mean, daydreaming is a difficult thing. I mean, obviously you're going to zone out sometimes. Everyone zones out every once in a while. But you need to make sure you're focusing on the action. The easiest way to do that is to make a game out of what you are doing, right? If you're playing poker, always put people on ranges. Do something to wake yourself up. If you're falling asleep, right, maybe have your cup of coffee. Maybe um, stand up and walk around the table. Maybe do some squats. Maybe do some jumping jacks. I don't know. Do whatever you can to make yourself pay attention and not zone out. And if you find that you zone out all the time, maybe you need to talk to the doctor because I don't, I don't know anyone who is zoned out all the time and just not paying attention. Do you play Borgata cash games? Every once in a while. Can you talk about tipping after being in the money? How much is correct? The casino takes, I think, 3% from almost all tournaments. You should feel no obligation to tip beyond the mandatory tip anywhere. If you go to a restaurant and they take 15% automatically, you shouldn't feel obligated to tip more. They've told you how much to tip. If you go to the casino and they take 3% automatically, you should not feel obligated to tip more. They already told you how much to tip. You can tip more if you want to. I think 3% total is a solid number. Um, we've done some math here before. Someone was um, berating a very good poker player who's won, I don't know, let's say $20 million over the last few years. And they're saying he hasn't tipped a dime on any of these winnings. But then I did the math. I looked up the tournaments. They're taking 3%. And he's actually tipped something like, I don't know what it was, like $1.8 million. Maybe he cashed for a ton. I don't remember what it was. Anyway, he had tipped a ton. <laughs> and these people were trying to berate this guy for not tipping. And I'm like, they made him tip. The person did tip. So I definitely do not feel obligated to tip anything on top of what the casino requires you to take. Um, Lewis says that they also take rake. Rake is not tip. I do not view those as the same thing. Um, but like say there was a tournament that, that raked 15% that took no tip and one that took 10% and took 3% tip. Probably don't need to be tipping on the 15% rake, right? Uh, let's see. A lot of people in live poker say they don't trust online poker. You label them, label them a fish after that. Yeah, that's accurate. People who think online poker is rigged are almost definitively fish because it's not. It is a more difficult game and people like to blame anyone besides themselves for their difficulties in life. All right, let's see. Um, I had a few more things to talk about. Music, music, music. Oh, hi, people want to see you. Hi. Come in, come in for a second. Come in for a second. Do you want to say hello to everyone? Yeah. They wanted to see you today. I'll play you blocks. You're playing with blocks? Yeah. Whoa, you're falling backwards. Stand up, stand up. Stand on daddy's legs. Stand on daddy's legs, not, not his crotch. Stand on daddy's legs. Can you say hello to everyone? Hello, one. Can you say Happy Mother's Day? Happy Mother's Day. That's right, Happy Mother's Day. She did the hair. Yeah, there's James, he's right over there. Um, James the hair? Yeah, there's ja three Jameses. What are you doing? Yeah. Well, are you going to class today? Are you going to the gym? Yes. Yeah, are you, where are you going to be? You going to work out? Us. Can you show people your muscles? Yeah, look, look at this muscle, look at this muscle. Oh, strong boy. Yeah, she's a very strong boy. Um, you want to say anything to anyone else before you go? Okay. Did you have a good weekend? Yes. What did you do? I go play with Grandpa. You're going to go play with Grandpa? Yeah. Yeah, did you go to the zoo this weekend? Yes. Yeah, did you see a peacock? Mm -hmm. You see goats? Yes. You see sheep? Yes. Did you give Mommy a, a card with your handprint on it? Yeah. Yeah? Do you love your Mommy? Yes. You love your bells. You heard bells, yeah. If y'all don't follow me on Instagram, by the way, in my Instagram story, I post um, James's day every once in a while. I also have a, little, a few videos on YouTube. Hey, I, saw, I see bells on my hair. Who's teaching you this? No, don't spit. Don't spit, <laughs> in, Dad, don't spit in Daddy's office. That's not good. All right, tell everyone bye-bye. Can you say all in? Can, can you say? No, stop, stop, stop. Don't do that. Stop. I'm going to make you leave. Can you say, go all in? Go all in. Can you say, good luck? Can you say, good luck? Can you say, good luck? Give daddy a kiss. Time, time for you to go. Bye. Now I want to say goodbye my hair. Say goodbye. Okay, go. No, I want to say goodbye my hair. You, you did it already. Say goodbye. See you. Oh, I love you. Have a good day. You're such a good boy. Bye. <sighs> All right.
Can I teach Musail and he did that already? Yes, good. No, 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 you gotta go, buddy. Let's see. What's the biggest tip I've ever given in a tournament? I honestly do not know. Not a lot. Because every tournament I've ever won, they, they took 3%. Oh, Grandpa wants you. You have, to, you have to go to the gym. Go. Go. You have to go to the gym. I want to say goodbye. You want to say goodbye? Yes. Okay, say goodbye. Do it. Say goodbye. Huh? Say bye-bye, everyone. Psst. Say bye-bye. Can you say bye-bye? Bye-bye. Can you say good luck? Good luck. All right, see you. Shut. Shut the door on your way out. Bye-bye. Yeah. Love you. Thank you, Grandpa. <sighs> yeah, what's the biggest tournament tip? I don't know. I'm trying to think when I won a million the first time. I think it was not a, it was not, it was, it's not a lot because I already take 3%. I don't know what to tell you. Um, it's always funny when John wants James to leave. <laughs> he has to go at some point. We're not talking about poker. Um, what were we talking about before we got here? Oh, music, music, music. Yeah. Um, music can be good or bad. There have been studies out there that, as far as I know, Last time I looked, they essentially say music is bad for performance, but music will let you perform at a relatively high level for a longer period of time. Maybe that's true, maybe it's not, maybe the studies have changed. I think this is probably stuff studies will change about on a regular basis, but um, maybe that's true, maybe that's not. Poker is a thing that maybe you don't have to perform at the absolute highest level for all day, right? And, you know, poker, especially live, is sometimes a very boring game. So music is certainly useful. I don't listen to a whole lot of music. I'll listen to these um, these tones. It's called Focus. <laughs> the actual name of the track is called Focus by Kelly Howell. It's basically just music. Uh, it's tones, it's not music. I don't, I don't know what you want to call it. Binaural beats, is that a thing? Anyway, I listen to that sometimes. I listen to classical music sometimes. I like organ music. I like um, cello music. But um, I don't really listen to much. I definitely suggest you not listen to podcasts while you are playing poker because that is definitely a distraction because you're actually listening and it's almost like you're in a conference listening to someone and that's purely a distraction. Um, same thing with audiobooks. I think audiobooks are worse than um, podcasts because usually you're sort of like in prose in that. Um, but I, I definitely do not suggest podcasts or audiobooks. I've, I've spent some time doing that. When I'm really tilty, <laughs> to be fair, I don't get really tilty very often. But if I'm particularly bored, if there's someone particularly annoying at my table I really don't want to hear, I will, I sometimes will put on a podcast. I'm trying to, this has happened like once in the last year. Um, so anyway, I, I really don't suggest that because it takes you away from poker. When do you tip when you win a single table satellite? Yes, I do. There is no tip taken. Um... Often, I will just give whatever cash. They, so I, I guess it depends on your turn, right? But I don't know. Do whatever you think is reasonable. Imagine you were to give 5% on the on the win. Say you play a $200 satellite and win $2,000. 5% on that is, what, 40 bucks? Seems reasonable. 5% on a $10,000 win is 500 bucks. That seems a little bit high, so maybe a little bit less than that, right? I obviously think it's ridiculous that the buy-in level you're playing... It, comes into account when it comes to tipping. Doesn't make logical sense to me, but um, it is what it is. You say I'm playing the one day super bounty on the fourth. I most likely am, unless I'm in the 5K still. Most likely. Let's see. So music, podcast, etc. I would I would get off of that. What else? So, so far, to help you focus, we talked about making a very important thing for your life. We've talked about figuring out why you need to make an important thing for your life. You figure out, or we've talked about getting the clutter out of your life, both physically and in your schedule. We talked about having a schedule. We talked about getting rid of all kinds of distractions like degenerate gambling games, like drugs, etc., cetera, et cetera. Um, We talked about setting a schedule. Did I say that already? I think I did. We talked about music and other distractions. Some people watch videos at the poker table. Like they'll sit there and they'll set up an iPad and watch a movie. Don't do that. Some people read a book. Don't do that. Some people watch a sporting event. Don't do that, right? Then finally, you just need to do the work. Understand, once we have all of these distractions, we have a schedule, we have a clean area of time, sit down and do the work. If there are distractions on your computer, like say you want to play Magic the Gathering or Hearthstone, don't do it. You have to have a little bit of discipline to get anything done in life, right? 
you must have discipline to actually sit down and do the work. People ask me how we've written the majority of these books back here, all 14 of them or whatever it is, because I'm not afraid to sit down and do the work, right? I'm very good at being disciplined and doing what I need to do to get the job done. Same thing with poker, right? I'm not a naturally good poker player. For those of all who think you have to be super talented, I am far from talented. But I've studied a lot. I was willing to sit down and do the study all day, every day for three years, right? Play, study, play, study, did that. Those four sessions all day, every day for three years straight. And it got me very good at poker. Who'd have thought? And I started with 50 bucks, right? Started $50. Within three years, we had 350000 And that's just from sitting down, working hard, and grinding hard. And I had a really clean plate back then. The fortunate thing about most people's lives, especially if they are young, is that they don't have anything to do. They have like literally, literally nothing to do. And that's great because they aren't distracted. They just have to be disciplined to do the work. Their, their issue will be procrastination um, as opposed to people who have too much stuff to do. So anyway, figure out what really matters and do it. You must be willing to do the work. Am I going to be doing a little coffee in Vegas? Probably not, but maybe. The problem is, is that when I'm in Vegas and when I'm traveling to play poker in general, what is the most important thing in the world to me? Well, it's to win some tournaments. That's <laughs> why I'm out there, right? It's why I'm leaving my family for a while to go and play poker. It's not to goof off and see if I win some hands. It's to actually try to do my absolute best. And I don't think doing a show in the morning is the most beneficial use of that or the way to optimize it because... This is like a, you know, it doesn't feel like a stressful show, but it's a marginally stressful thing to have to make sure all the programs are working. So I mean, like, look at this, this device on Instagram. It's not even holding the camera straight, right? Like, that's, that's annoying. That's stressful. There are things like um, making sure the internet works. That's always a sweat. Do I want these sweats in my life? And the answer is no. And obviously, I have to wake up an hour earlier, right? And it doesn't seem, doesn't seem productive for the goal, right? Like today... I, I, def, I mean, whenever I'm at home, we are in work for all of you mode, right? Because it's the most important thing in the world to me when I'm at home. When I'm out playing poker, I'm out there to win poker tournaments. I'm in win poker tournaments mode, especially when I'm playing the poker. And the problem with the coffee in the morning is that, well, first things first, it'd be 6 a.m. in Vegas. We're obviously not going to do it at that time. Um, Maybe we'll do something. I don't know. It's going to be more impromptu if I do do it. So it definitely will not be a daily or a, every a three times a week thing. Sorry. Let's see. You should probably have some good karma coming your way. I'm not sure good karma is, exists. There are some horrible humans in the world who have somehow made their way through it. And there are some great humans in the world who have not made their way through it. So um, all you can do is do your best. Sort of like that saying about luck, about how if you put yourself in a lot of good situations, you'll inevitably be lucky. If you're a good enough person and help other people enough, inevitably they will help you out as well. When am I going to Vegas? I go from J May 25th, or no, May 26th through June 6th, and then from June 30th until probably July 15th or so. What's the best way to find me during the World Series? Figure out where I'm playing each day and go there, and then look. Um, but yeah, do the work. So many people don't want to do the work. Tips for dealing with procrastination? I honestly don't know <laughs> because I'm not a procrastinator. I feel like I've only procrastinated one time in my life when I was making a book on cash games. It's right back there. Jonathan Little on Live No Limit Cash Games. It was a hard book. And actually, the initial book I wrote was about 800 pages, and I was not finished. And I was bogged down. I was tired. I was worn out. So what did I do? Well, I decided to scrap the majority of the post-flop section where I was trying to go through every possible iteration of, that could happen, right? And I went with my wife on a work trip. She went to Washington, D.C. for a week to do work. She used to travel there every once in a while. I sat in her hotel room for a week, and I wrote that book. And I had no distractions. I had nothing else to do. All I did from when she was gone to when she, she came back was write the book, and I got the book done. So that, that's really my tip for beating procrastination is get rid of everything else and your, get rid of everything else in your life and just really, really focus. Realize this is your job. Realize this is what you must do. And if you don't, you're a failure. <laughs> because I've, I've never had a problem running into a deadline in my life. And that was the first time where it was actually kind of getting close. And to me, not doing what you say you're going to do and to your um, employers, right? My D&D poker, I told them I would have the book done. Not doing that would have made me a uh, failure. 
And I'm not going to be a failure to them, especially if I have any good control over it. And I do. It's just a matter of getting rid of all potential distractions and doing the work. Like when I was there, I, I, I purposely did not get the internet, right? I, um, all I had was a word processing program and, uh, and my notes, right? That was all I had. It's all I needed. It's all I wanted. What's your website that lists online poker sites in America? Go to jonathanlittlepoker.com slash USA. There are a few sites that are marginally worth playing. You'll be in Vegas at the same time. Good, come see me. There are two secrets to success. One, never reveal everything you know. I generally disagree about that. You can reveal everything you know if you live a very balanced life. Because, think about this, right? I can reveal everything I know about poker. It's not going to help most of you. <laughs> no, it's not going to help most of you beat me. Because... I'm gonna implement the skills better than almost all people, right? That's the neat thing about coaching people is that you can coach people to be direct competitors, yet if you have an additional 15 years of experience and you're still actively working to always improve, they're not gonna catch up. People always ask me, like, aren't you worried about making the game tougher? I mean, sure, the game's gonna be tougher for some people. I've had many, many rude emails from disgruntled poker players who used to be beating $500,000 games who blame me for making it more difficult. Because they go to the casino and they see people carrying my books and talking about Jonathan Little and all this. And, sorry, get better yourself, right? I don't care. Because, listen, if you are not going to do work, if you're not going to better yourself, I think you should have less, have less success in the future. And um, I don't have a problem with that. And, you know, I have played with people who are my direct students who are almost certainly better at poker than me. Two of the young people in the Global Poker League who are drafted um, from the European countries... Two of them came up to me and said that they learned poker from me, and that without me, they would not be good at poker. And that, that's very, very touching, because these are guys who are making like millions of dollars playing poker. And it's good to hear that, right? I mean, these people are direct competitors. But sure, if I make 20 direct competitors for myself over 15 years of coaching people, it is what it is. <laughs> uh, how would you play tournaments if you had one buy-in for it? The same as I would all, all the other time. Let's see. Can you pay for web content by transferring PokerStars money? Email support at pokercoaching.com and we will often accommodate various ways to send money. What are my thoughts on the performance of Bren Kinney and Montenegro? I don't know anything about his performance. Throws out GTO, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, um, I, I think he's a very, very good player, very naturally talented player, and a very, very skilled player. And he plays great. I have not had good success against him. <laughs> he somehow always shows me the nuts. He shows everybody else bluffs and shows me the nuts, which shows... Maybe he knows I don't fold a whole lot and that other people fold a lot. Um, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I'm glad you all made the chat. Good, good, good. Next time I'm in D.C., you can take me for lunch. I'm probably not going to D.C. anytime in the future because my wife got a new job working with an AI company that will likely revolutionize the law profession. Speaking of, you know, not continuously innovating, right? Uh, my, my wife's willing to do that. She left a job that was a good, very good paying job as a, as a counsel at a well-respected law firm to go try something new. And it's exciting. It's nerve-wracking. But just like myself, she is always trying to improve herself as well. And that leads to unsure situations. But fortunately, you don't always have to be sure. Brunson said he gave away too much after writing the first super system. So afterwards, he changed strategies. Um, yeah. To be fair, back then no one knew anything, right? The idea that you could re-raise with more than just aces and kings is, uh, was groundbreaking, right? You can re-raise more than just aces and kings? Are you, are you kidding me? Um, we're not, I mean, look, we're clearly giving away way more than that, and I have had to change, to be fair. My first book, I told everyone to continuation about 100% of the time. People read that. They learned how to defend better. Not because they read the book, of course, but because people naturally learn, naturally learn to play better. What's going on with this camera? This camera's a little bit off. Is that better? That's better. Now this camera's off. Let's move this. There we go. Um, but yeah, so people learn to play better. So now that that strategy, that very easy strategy, just raising and then betting a lot, kind of goes out the window because people play better, and that's a okay. So you learn to play better. It's not like we're a one trick pony here. You can only raise a continuation bet. So you learn, right? You're going to dedicate one room in your house to playing poker. Any ideas for thing to put inside this room? I have no idea. What do you mean? I, I, you mean like a, as a game room? If it's a game room to play poker with your friends, you need a poker table, you need some chairs, maybe you need a bar, maybe you need a TV, I don't know. 
if you're devoting it to study poker, then a computer and some books. If you bust early from an event, do you rebuy? Yes, absolutely. Or do you move on to the next event? Depends on what the next event is. All right, well, I have to go take care of the work now. We're going to go return that monitor we talked about at the top of the day. We are going to call and get my kids' music classes reset up. We are going to um, do the work to make the cash game course for all of you. And by the end of the day, maybe we'll have something to show for it. What can you say about the moral part of poker? It's a beautiful game, but lots of people have problems with that. The moral idea of winning other people's money I don't really have a problem with that because when you're playing any game, you are winning people's money, whether they think you are or not. Because let's say you go and you play a tennis tournament. You get really good at tennis, and I win the tennis tournament and you lose the tennis tournament. Well, I likely won some money. I took your money because I'm better than you at the game, right? Is that unethical to take the people's money? No, absolutely not. Is it um, unethical to beat people at games that you are better than them at? No, it's absolutely not. Um, some people think any form of gambling is wrong, yet they think investing is fine. You know, investing in things like the stock market is purely gambling if games like poker are gambling. Maybe less variance, depending on how you do it. Maybe more variance, depending on how you do it. But it's important to understand what exactly you are doing. Um, some people say you're not adding anything to the world. You're not adding a ton. I'll, I'll definitely agree with that. But I mean, most jobs don't add anything to the world. Um, if you're a poker player, people say you add experience for the other people who want to go there and gamble. Sure, right? But the other, other gamblers do that themselves. Um, I think it, there's nothing wrong with having hobbies, with having jobs, with, with doing things to enjoy your life. Because at the end of the day, we're trying to enjoy our life. And, you know, some people are happy to do that in some ways and some people are happy to do it in other ways but to be fair most people in the world do not maximize their potential i'm sure i'm not maximizing my potential i probably could have been an engineer or a doctor or a lawyer or something that helped the world in way better ways but i'm not and that's okay and i'm not concerned with that because i thoroughly enjoy my life i think i'm being a good father to my children and i think i'm being a good steward of the opportunities that have been given to me in the poker world and I'm very happy with that, that, that situation and that result. Um, okay, that's it. Have fun. Good job. Good luck. Good luck. You're happy to hear James is learning music? Yeah, James has been going to a music class since he was, I don't even know, three months old. Thomas has been going too now. Um, James goes to three classes now. He goes to music class. Basically, they, they play music and all the kids run and dance and sing. He goes to a gym class where basically all the kids run and dance and jump around on apparatuses. Apparati? Apparatuses? It can't be the right word. Um, and then also he has a STEM class, science, technology, engineering, and math, where they learn about stuff. Um, they apparently dissected a fly the other day. They, he brought home a, a pot, and the pot grew some grass. He studied the stars. I don't know. He studies stuff. Stuff they, stuff they do with kids. Is this poker or counseling? This is a little bit of both. Listen, poker translates very, very well to life. And I'm happy to help you all with your poker, but at the end of the day, I actually hope I help you all with life. I've had, done a lot of things right and a lot of things wrong, and I'm happy to share my experiences to help others. Um, so with that, I have a lot of experiences in my World Series of Poker bundle. You can go to pokercoaching.com slash WSOP. We have tons of footage of me coaching other people getting ready for the World Series and also PowerPoint presentations on how to maximize your success at the World Series of Poker. So if you're interested in that, Check it out at pokercoaching.com slash WSOP bundle. I am sure you will enjoy it. I'm sure you'll learn a ton. And if you don't like it, ask for a refund because I don't want any of you to spend money on something that you do not think adds value. If it does add value though, realize it's going to be way more than the $100 price tag. So thanks a lot. Good job. Good luck. Have fun. Enjoy your days. And that's it. I'll see you all again on Wednesday.